Now, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy authorized the release of 40,000 hours of surveillance video from hundreds of cameras all over the nation's capital that was taken on January the 6th of 2021. The tapes were initially shared with producers from the Tucker Carlson show on Fox News, who after a few weeks of sifting through what was many hours of just empty hallways and facilities, well, they put together a very revealing compilation of previously unseen footage. Now, to say the reaction was explosive is an understatement. Predictably, Democrat Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and Democrat California Congressman Camera Hogg and all-around professional liar Adam Schiff <laughs> predicted that simply viewing the actual events from that day would somehow mark the end of civilization as we know it. How anyone takes these people seriously is beyond me. Now, a few Republicans did what they usually do, and they cozied up to the Democrat narrative that the January 6th riot was worse than Pearl Harbor, 9-11, or the Civil War. I'm, of course, talking about Mitt Romney, Mitch McConnell, and Tom Tillis, mostly. And then the utterly discredited and soundly defeated Liz Cheney and the Nancy Pelosi-approved former Republican Adam Kinziger, they also tore their garments to protest that anyone other than the kangaroo court jesters sitting on the politically charged January 6th panel, why, they shouldn't be able to see themselves the full story. But having watched a little bit of it, here's some things we learned. There were some really bad things done on January 6th of 2021. I've said it from the day it happened. Those who broke through police barricades, broke windows or doors, assaulted a police officer, whether it was physical or verbal, or who vandalized facilities should be criminally charged. I mean, that's wrong. There's no excuse for such action. I don't care how angry or frustrated one may be with the system. But we also learned that what America saw from the congressional clown car pretending to be hearings were a tightly produced and falsified record that included the addition of audio sounds of a crowd that didn't exist on the original tapes since there was no audio recorded. That was added in. We learned that the tapes were manipulated by the Adam Schiff, Liz Cheney, Nancy Pelosi Club to pretend that Senator Josh Hawley of Missouri was the only senator hauling his backside out of the Senate chamber, when in fact the full video revealed that the Capitol Police were leading a whole host of senators out of the chamber in mass, and that Hawley was simply the last one to leave, not the first, and was following the instructions of the security forces. We learned that Officer Brian Sicknick, who the committee continued to claim was murdered by rioters, in fact was walking about the Capitol quite some time after the January 6th committee claimed that he had been killed. Turns out that according to the medical examiner, he didn't die that day at all. He died from a stroke the day after. And after a very thorough examination by the medical examiner, it was determined that his stroke was not the result of any injuries from January 6th, and that despite repeated media lies, he was not struck in the head by a fire extinguisher. We also learned that the mysterious Ray Epps, who is seen urging people to go into the Capitol and giving instructions to a number of people about breaching the Capitol, we found out he lied to the January 6th committee. He claimed that he had gone back to his hotel shortly after texting a relative that he had orchestrated the assault on the Capitol. He was in fact caught on video, still very much at the Capitol, long after he claimed that he had left to go back to his hotel. Now we still don't know if he was there on his own or was in fact a government informer. But unlike many others who have all but rotted in a D.C. jail since the riot, he was ne never so much as charged with a misdemeanor, despite his clear urging for others to enter the Capitol. There is much yet to uncover about that day, but here's a few things we know for sure. Number one, the media repeatedly lied when it said five police officers were killed by rioters that day. No police officer was killed at the Capitol. None. There were four deaths at the Capitol that day. All of them were Trump supporters. Two died of heart attacks, one from an accidental overdose, and an unarmed Air Force veteran by the name of Ashley Babbitt was shot and killed 
by a Capitol police officer who is never even reprimanded for the shooting. Number two, the January 6th committee didn't show video of the event as they happened. They hired a former ABC producer to create videos that were very carefully and very selectively edited and in which sound effects were added for dramatic effect. Look, this was never an investigation. It was a slick TV show. Number three, there were absolutely bad actors that day who did criminal things and should be held accountable. But hundreds, thousands of others were charged with various crimes who didn't even go inside the building. People like Brandon Strzok, who has been on our show several times. And for most, the charges were ultimately dropped or maybe reduced to misdemeanors, but not before ruining many of the lives of those people. Number four, Nancy Pelosi was repeatedly urged to put extra security in place that day, but for some reason she didn't. She has never been asked under oath why not. Instead of the press demanding that the 40,000 hours of video be released, the mainstream media joined the chorus of corrupt Democrats urging that it be covered up. Look, when the press wants to turn the lights off instead of turn the lights on, they are the enemy of the people. Truth won't hurt us. Truth never hurts us, but lies will hurt us. Let the truth out and let the chips fall. But if you keep the truth hidden, it is the nation that falls.